Hello, and welcome to Viking Views. I'm Taylor Gilkey. Missouri Valley College has always provided tutoring services, but this semester, the college is bringing something back that is on the student athlete's wish list. For Missouri Valley College students, the Learning Center is one of the few places that are designated for completing schoolwork, and also a place that provides tutoring services. Our tutoring service is on a walk-in basis. In other words, we don't take appointments. We just have the schedules available to you, and if you need a tutor, you have to kind of rearrange your schedule maybe to get to them. Finding the schedules for the tutors can be found by going to the MoVal homepage within the internet page in Student Services. But now the tutoring services have become even more schedule-friendly. Most of the times, the students had like practice during the day and they still need a tutor, but they don't have the time for it. So now, like, after you come from the CAF, you can come to the uh, library and learn a thing or two, I think. Mm -hmm. Now, Monday through Thursday, tutors are available in the mural library from 7 to 9. And for those that like to pull all-nighters, there is another helpful tool provided by the college. Tutor.com is an online tutoring service provided to all students here at Valley. It's free. Each student has five hours a semester. To get to Tutor.com, students would need to access it through their Moodle page where they would need to log in to find the link. This tutoring site is active from 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. for those late night workers. Even though tutors are on a first come first serve basis, tutors are willing to work out alternative times with students if need be. Martin Luther King Day was January 16th and as Viking Views Ricardo Padilla reports, Missouri Valley College's Black Student Union decided to do something to celebrate the day. The Black Student Union hosts the second annual Martin Luther King Walk at Missouri Valley College on Friday 20. Well, we started last year and um, it's almost like the march that he, he did for Selma and we wanted to kind of do a remembrance of him and what he stood for. He usually walked when there was, you know, conflict within the community or whatnot, but he always did it peacefully, so we always wanted to kind of just bring that back and you know show that it's still alive you know that we can be peaceful and we can be unified and and walk and you know and have a, a purpose while just walking. The event was supposed to be on Monday 16 but the club faced a problem they didn't expect to have. We didn't get uh, enough time to really get the info out there because Friday school it was school was closed so that kind of messed us up too because we planned on like really doing like a, a big thing with handing out flyers on Friday then they canceled school and it's kind of like oh. <laughs> Students, faculty members, people from Marshall and even some furry friends participate on this walk around campus. One of these people is Reverend Melanie Dees Campbell. I spoke last year for the march and then when I discovered they had to cancel I decided to come to the second annual march. And that's when I decided to bring this photograph of Dr. King and the people that walked with him. Civil rights was something that people had to fight for, okay, to get over the divide of racism in this country. And it has to never be forgotten that white people, brown people, black people, red people died and suffered for what many people take for granted today. Reverend Campbell talked a little bit about how this movement helped a lot of people to get the things that we have today that we sometimes forget. Dr. King was a Christian. He wasn't a perfect man, but he did believe in Christian ethics of peace. And so that's what will change hearts. Perseverance, standing up for strength, enduring wrong things, but speaking up about them. At the end of the walk, the BSU club gives their thanks to everyone that joined them in this important event. I'm Ricardo Padilla, Viking Views. The walk was an event to remember the people that fought for civil rights. Missouri Valley College has a long tradition of hiring its alumni. Viking Views' G Georgina Padilla reports on Thomas Merlot, an MVC alum who came back for a specific job. A graduate student from MVC is the new international coordinator. Thomas Merlot came back to MVC to help international students. I am, I am from Paris, France. I came to Valley in 2007 and I graduated from Valley in 2011 with a Bachelor of Science majoring in Business Marketing and with a minor in Art. Thomas decided to go back to France and have multiple jobs, but as soon as he knew about the opportunity at NBC, he didn't think twice. I've always wanted to work with international students because of my background, so I decided to apply at Missouri Valley College. Um, 
when I saw that the position was open. I am in charge of uh, recruiting, admitting, and uh, making sure the check-in process for international students goes smoothly. His main goal is to make international students feel comfortable and share with them his Valley experience. Um, well, Valley has always, I mean, it's been a huge part of my life, being an alumni from here. Um, what I want to accomplish is I had my experience here at Valley. I want to share it, share it with the students, and I also want to make theirs, improve theirs by changing some of the stuff that I had to, like all the bumps that I had on over the years. I want to change those and make sure it's more of a smooth ride. Georgina Padilla, Viking Views. Merlot's office is on the first floor of Ferguson Center. Missouri Valley College opened its season by knocking off Cova Stockton College. Viking Views, Chris Wallace reports. Valley's men's volleyball team serves Cova Stockton a three to one win for their season opener. Uh, it was a starter match. Um, we're coming into the season ranked 10th and uh, we are hesitant tonight. Right. So what we're going to work on doing tomorrow at Missouri Baptist and through the rest of the week is increasing our confidence so we can kind of unleash a little bit and so everyone can see what we can actually do. I really just wanted to let them go. If they crash and burn, they crash and burn, but uh, we have so much potential coming into this team. Uh, our freshman class is going to play a huge role, and they need to understand that it's okay to screw up on the way to uh, figuring out how to play. Well, we have a lot to learn. Um, we can just take it as experience. Um, we've taken it as just, it's rough around the edges right now, and so now we know what we need to refine. I, mean, I was a little nervous, you know, as everyone should be, first college game, you know, but um, I think I pulled it out, so or as, uh, we pulled it out as a team, so I think it was good. Fistic also says that his expectations for the rest of the season in the team is to continue to learn to compete and that they can only get better from here on out. Chris Wallace, Viking Views. The Vikings play at Graceland on the 24th before heading to Parkville, Missouri for the Park Tournament over the weekend. The next home match is January 31st against Lindenwood Belleville. The Viking Sports Network is streaming the game on moval.edu. Missouri Valley College is now home for Katja Kristonisic, who will be one of the new faces on the women's volleyball team for the 2017 fall season. Viking Views' Mateus Marino reports on her journey to Valley. Kristonisic is one of the recruits that Coach Holt has for the 2017 volleyball season. The sport has been a part of Kristonosic's life for a while. I started playing volleyball when I had eight years old. We were in the second grade, me and my sister, and all our girl girlfriends as well. We just wanted to check out the sport to see if we liked. And then after a week or two, we just decided that's going to be the sport that we want to play in the future. And then we started coming to the practices irregularly and just fell in love with the sport. After playing the sport for many years, Kristonosic decided that it would be a good idea to use it as a tool to achieve one of her dreams, coming to the United States. Our junior year of high school, we decided to um, start going to English classes as well as the math classes um, to start preparing ourselves for the tests. And then um, we decided in our senior year of high school that we definitely want to go, and so we got a manager. Um, and we got our videos ready and uh, he just found our schools. Uh, we found a couple of schools and uh, they offer us scholarships but we had to pick uh, the best solution. At that time it was University of Arkansas and Fort Smith was the best solution so we're, that's where we uh, first went uh, in our freshman year. With three successful seasons, Kristonosic ended her junior year better than expected being nominated the NCAA Division II Player of the Year. I felt special when I got awarded of Player of the Year. Uh, the reason is because I never expected such a great achievement and all my teammates and friends were just like supporting me and they were there at that time and I just like, I couldn't believe it at first but then as the days passed I just, I just started realizing that that's all what I got the entire year I, I've been working for that and finally I got what I, I was working for. Besides the volleyball program, the reason why Kristonosic chose Missouri Valley was that Maya, her twin sister, was already a Viking. We decided to graduate together and we just want us to have our senior year together and like, take the best out of it. 
Maya could not wait any longer to have her sister back by her side. I told her about this school uh, because I uh, came here first and I knew that we needed another outside. So um, I told her that it would be a good idea to come here and play and help us out and also uh, spend more time with me. Katja is getting ready for her season. She's already making the new school her new home. Matheus Marinho, Viking Views. Kristonisic says she can't wait to be on the court next season and play as a Viking. The women's volleyball team is coming off a 29-9 season in a semifinal appearance in the Heart of America Athletic Conference Tournament. That's Viking Views for this week. Our next show is February 7th. I'm Taylor Gilkey. Thanks for watching.